to you about tracking events and creating a custom report in Google Analytics so you can track events that are taking place on your website. Events are things like actions people take, downloading a PDF, clicking a video link, listening to a podcast, registering for an event, clicking a certain link on a page, those kinds of things. Those are, those are events. So today I'm going to actually show you how to create a custom event tracking report that you can have sent to yourself weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, or to your clients. The first thing you want to do is log into your analytics account. The next thing is go over to the left nav bar and choose custom reports. You're going to create a new monthly report. I named mine something very simple just so I know what it is, event tracking report. That's easy enough. The first tab I always do is an overview, just so that I have the same information that I would normally see if I go down to the event stuff on the left navigation bar under behavior or conversions. <clears throat> so this, this way that information is given to me automatically when I save the report and generate it. So I'm going to do an overview tab. I'm going to be checking on the metrics for events. And the first thing I want to look at is total events. How many events are taking place? Next thing I want to look at or have available is how many users are doing those total events. And then finally, the number of unique events that are taking place. The next thing I want to look at is the dimension. The, the dimension is the first column you usually see in any report or page that you look at in Google Analytics is the first column on any of those pages. So in this case, ours is going to be event category. That's the first thing we're going to look at. So the event category are the things that you've organized events into. Downloads, clicks, form submits, video plays, those are categories. The next dimension I'm going to add is event action. An action is the step or thing that the person does in that category. For example, you click to download, you click to play, you <clears throat> register an event with a form submit. So those are the kinds of actions that you're taking. And I also want to see the event label. The event label is <clears throat> the name of the thing that's happening. So for example, if you have a video on your website, the action is click, the label is the name of that video and the category would be video plays. I'm also going to add a filter so I don't see something. I don't want to see any of the not set information by category. So I'm going to set that to not show up in my report. I'm going to actually exclude it. I'm going to exclude my event category that is exactly at not set. You've probably seen information on your reports and there's always a not set row and it's hard to get that data out of analytics. You get it through some other tools, but I don't even want to see that row on my report. So I'm going to exclude it. <clears throat> At this point, I'm going to save. And I'm going to actually see what that data is. The event category, that is the first dimension that I put in there. That's the green box that sits below the blue boxes. Total events, users, and unique events. Those are the three blue boxes that I added. So these are the column headings, and this is the dimension. Now, this is just the first tab in this report that I want to see. So I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to call it Event Tracking Overview Report. And I'm going to click Save or OK. When I do that, notice over here on the left side, now you're under saved reports. You're no longer under custom reports. You're under saved reports. And saved reports only save one tab of information. So there's my overview tab. To create another tab in this report, I would go back to custom reports, event tracking report, and I'll click edit in the top right corner. I'm going to add a new tab. In this tab, I'm going to call this actions because I want to see what people are doing, the step that they're taking to create the tracking mechanism to trigger. So the metric I'm looking at is event action. What are those actions? I'm going to be looking at it by users and I'm also interested in total events. 
Again, the dimension is going to be event action. I'm going to leave my exclude on here so I don't get a row of not set. I'm going to click Save. Here's the report. It starts at the Overview tab, so this is going to look a little weird. You have to come back up here and click the Action tab. Here's your action, and I'm tracking clicks, downloads, and forms submitted. And I can see there were five clicks, one download, and one form submitted during this one week time frame. That's my actions report. To save that, I click Save, and I say Event Tracking Actions Report. Click OK. You'll see that it automatically goes over to Saved Reports. Now there's a report here called Actions Reports. The last piece of data I want to get for my event tracking report is the pages that things are happening on. I'm going to click Edit, add another tab, and I want to be able to track the, the pages where people are actually causing this action to take place because this is going to inform me on if the pages I'm trying to market to or lead gen to aren't the pages that people are causing actions to happen on, something needs to change in my marketing efforts or my social media or what lead generation opportunities or sales, whatever you're doing to drive people to pages. So let's say, for example, you have a registration for an event coming up and you have a page set up for that. You're tracking the form clicks or registration, whatever you want to call it, registrations and you look at your pages list report and you don't see that page on your report during a very good time frame when these things should be happening. There's obviously something wrong with either getting to that page, people not clicking on the number or the registration button or the whatever you need them to click on. So this is a report that you can generate and have it sent to you to be able to track this thing in real time or on a weekly, monthly, daily, whatever basis that you need it to be. So for pages, my metric group is actually going to be pages. I'm tracking pages, but what am I tracking on those pages? There's that users again. I want to see how many of those there are. And I also want to look at the events taking place on those pages. Remember, we're doing event tracking. So the next thing I want to look at is page. Page is my dimension. I'm going to continue to exclude my event category. But when you see the report, remember you're at the first tab, you have to click on your pages tab. I can see which pages are causing the actions to take place or events to take place. I could track more things. I could track total events. I could track um, page bounce rates. I could track all kinds of things when it comes to these pages. But this is the information I want to know about tracking. I'm going to save this report, click Save, and I'm going to call this uh, Page Content Tracking Page Report, Pages Report, whatever you want to call it. Click OK. It pops over to Saved. There's the report. I go to the Saved Reports. There they are, Overview, Actions, and Pages. Now I'm going to edit this first one because I want this report to be sent to someone, particularly myself. I'm going to send this to myself every, oh, probably every month. If I were doing something on a weekly basis or daily, I could choose one of those as well. I'm going to choose on the first day of every month for the next 12 months, and I'm going to call this uh, in my little email that comes to me, my event tracking report includes overview, actions, and pages. And this is my pen heel, my company's name, event tracking report. So I can see that when it comes into my email box and I can set up a rule or whatever I want to do. I am not a robot. So, so far, this is just the overview report. I'm going to click send. This will send to me on the first day of the next month. Now I'm going to go back to saved reports. Here's the action report. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click share. But here, I'm going to say add it to an existing email. 
and I'm going to put it on this Peniel Event Tracking Overview report. So it gets appended to that email. So when I get the email, there's actually going to be three different, um, three different reports in there, three different PDFs in that report. Then I'm going to go to the Pages report, and I'm going to click Share. Add to an existing report, monthly report, there's the report, and that's scheduled as well. That's how you schedule, create and schedule the reports to be sent to you. You can add a number of email addresses in that share. You can uh, choose when or how often you want to send something. It's a great fun, it's, it's easy to do, and just so you have an idea of where I'm getting these column headings from, Look at behavior and then go to events overview. This is the report that we created. We have the events, there's the categories, total events. I added users because I want to see how many people are doing the events. Here's pages. There's the page, there's the total events, I added users. I can also go to my overview and I can look at the action event. And here's my actions. Click submitted downloads, total events. And then I can add users, which is what I've done. So that's where the information comes from. This information are your column headings or the blue boxes. This information is what goes in your green boxes or in the dimensions. Thanks. That's all we have time for today. And I'll talk to you soon. I hope you have a great day.